Um, I move to uh, question two, um, and it goes like this. I have struggled from the start with statements that appear to place the mind in the category of nouns that correlate with real things, as opposed to the category of nouns associated with human abstract constructs. In this latter category, I place nouns such as symphony, economy, and soul. If mind is positioned in the abstract construct category of nouns, it makes no more sense to speak of a mind projecting intentionality into the outside world as it does to speak of an economy, a symphony, or a soul projecting intentionality into its external world. Please clarify in which category of noun are you placing mind? You love to ask simple questions, don't you? Um, look, I'll tell you, it may surprise you, but I really do not think that uh, the mind um, is different from other things uh, in the ontological sense. In other words, I do believe that the mind exists. It's not a mere abstraction. Um, it's not a figment of our imaginations. Um, in fact, our imaginations are part of something that really exists, which is our mind. It's part of nature. Uh, just like apples and pears uh, are part of nature, so too the mind is part of nature. What do I mean by that? I mean you can perceive it. You can experience it. Uh, the big difference is that you don't experience it with your external. It's not a thing that you can see. It's not a thing that you can hear. Uh, it's not an object in that sense. It is a subjective state. Um, but subjective states, I hope you all agree with me, certainly exist in nature. Uh, and the, 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 the core uh, um, quality of subjectivity, as I've been saying uh, uh, in, the, in the lessons, is feeling. Feelings exist. Um, they exist in the same way as colors exist and sounds exist. You can actually perceive them. You can actually experience them. And I know you all have. You have felt sadness. You have felt anger. You have felt fear. These are things that you perceive in the same way as you perceive red and loud um, and so on. So it's for this reason that I say that the mind is not an abstraction, that the mind exists. It's something that exists in the real. It's something that exists in the perceptual realm. It's just that we are so biased toward um, prejudiced towards uh, favoring external perception uh, and we say that's these are real things uh, and we, we, we don't um, uh, grant the same status to internal perceptions uh, we don't want to, to acknowledge that the mind exists uh, it's manifestly uh, experientially there empirically observable uh, but it's observable on a different surface uh, not the external surface, but rather the internal surface um, of perception. So, no, I don't think it's an abstraction. Uh, I don't think that it's, uh, that it's any less real than anything else. However, remember that everything else, all, the way we perceive things, um, the, is not the totality. Science starts with perceptions. It starts with classifications with, with uh, what we used to call natural history. You know, you describe things, uh, you, you classify them into groups and so on. But then ultimately, uh, to do proper science, you want to explain things uh, and you want to probe behind the mere perceptual surface and you want to find out uh, what really uh, generates uh, the phenomena uh, th that you perceive. And then you have to come up with abstractions. Um, well, first of all, you use artificial uh, perceptual aids, we use things like microscopes and telescopes and whatnot to probe into the deeper structure of things. And so we see things that appear to be solid are in fact made um, of lots of teeny weeny little things with lots of space in between um, and so on, uh, to refer to the most uh, obvious uh, uh, such example. But the same applies to the mind. The same applies, that is to say, to feelings, that when we probe behind them, uh, when, we want to, when, when we want to understand where do they come from, uh, what causes them, how, do, how does it really work, then we start having to make inferences behind and beyond uh, the perceivable data as to what are the laws that govern uh, these phenomena. And those laws that govern these phenomena uh, are also the mind. Uh, they're the mind in the, in the deeper sense. But this doesn't set the mind apart from anything else in science. I mean, think, for example, of um, uh, gravity or electricity. I mean, you could say these are abstractions. Uh, you, you don't see gravity. 
you only see its effects. Um, well, yes, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, you know, it, it has effects because it exists. Uh, the phenomena uh, are, are, are explained by uh, inferences as to um, the, 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 the deeper nature of things. And that's what I'm trying to do in this course um, with, re with regard to the mind. It's, it's no different. It's not a mere abstraction. I hope you agree. So, or should I say, I hope I've convinced you.